history of Bash and Shell. We're going to append that on to the end of the video. <coughs> and uh, he's going to look up some facts about it. Because where you're, where you're running all your commands right now, git bash or the terminal, is actually another interpreter. So like we're using Ruby, which is an interpreter. So this is another interpreter. So I'm, I'm trying to help you guys um, at least get some ground in what is essentially a, a very floating ephemeral thing in the sense that unless you always remember it's ones and zeros, it may seem like magic, but it's not. So, and it's floating in ephemeral in the sense that there's many abstraction layers underneath that may not be clear. But actually, there's always a direct connection between ones and zeros and like say where you currently are in a computer system. So, we were talking about Heroku we were talking about Git, and we used localhost 3000. How did we get to localhost 3000? How did that, how did we manifest localhost 3000? Started our server. Started our server. So yeah, we were using Rails, we went server, and we got localhost 3000, and what we did, um, we made a change. So one of the changes is we, we changed public index.html and we uh, deleted everything but and then we added our name in the file. We visited localhost 3000 and we got it. So now there's another thing going on here, is the, is like the git the git thing, right? So git and localhost 3000 totally separate. So let's draw that. Let's draw. Let's draw git. Let's draw localhost 3000. This is a server, and this is our version control system, VCS, and there. Are running on computer machine. Computer machine, yeah. So, get localhost 2000 VCS in our server. So they're, I'm putting them beside each other because I want you to realize that they're independent in nature. <coughs> now, Heroku also has a server, also has Git, but they're, they're not independent. And they're not localhost. Localhost is a, a quick catch-all phrase for this machine that I'm on right now. Localhost always is this machine that I'm on right now. So we have Heroku, and Heroku is built on top of a computer machine. And actually, it's built on top of a computer machine. It's built on top of a bunch of computer machines that are called AWS, which are built on top of real computers, which are running somewhere in you know, the East Coast or the West Coast or whatever. So it all comes down to something physical at some point. So we have Heroku, and I've, I told you, Git and the, the server They're, they're connected somehow. So I'm just going to draw this connection here. And this is Heroku. So does anyone, can anyone remember from yesterday a connection that happened between localhost computer machine and Heroku? There was a command that we typed in, it was like near the end, <coughs> near the beginning too. Yeah, we work. It's, that's part of it, definitely. So, here we are with Git. Sorry, the question. Yeah, yeah. So we have exactly index.html. We've we've committed it here. We've said you know commit, and then we said uh, git push. We said git push Heroku. What else did 
And anything else? Master. Master. So what's the difference between add and commit? Add, uh, stages, tracks, a change. So it stages it to the index. Anything in the index, this, this will be not, not index.html, but git index. Anything in this index, it's staged, will be tracked. Anything that's committed, that's tracked, will no longer be staged, it'll be part of the index, and it'll be recorded as like, this change really happened. When you do a git push, wrote the master, that's everything that's been added, and that's everything that's been committed on the branch that you're currently sitting in. And then the branch that you're currently sitting in, by default, is just called master all the time. So that's why we use master. Just by convention, when you, when you still get in it, new git thing, you're in, you're in a branch, you're in the master branch. And Heroku has also the same thing going on. It's synonymous. So basically, it's like these two systems, these git things, you can think of them as being like entangled through your explicit communication. One of the commands being push, and that command connects them together. And it actually, it sends and it transmits this information about the git index in the git database with all the file changes and the history of the changes too, if I'm correct. I could be wrong. And uh, it goes into this git, and now we have index.html here. We have index.html here. So if our Heroku address, actually I didn't mean to do that, dot com is still dancing bear 909. we go to Dancing Bird 909, and we've just done a git push, and we've updated the index, what do you think is going to happen? What, what would you want to happen? Let's see. Let's say this. What would you expect to happen? The change would be live. That's what I would expect, too. That's what I would expect, too. So that's what this part is. So git, we know, like, from here, there's nothing special about Git and a server. We have it localhost. They're just running on a computer machine. They're independent. We do commits to Git. It doesn't mean the server is updated, but the file system is updated. This is happening on the computer machine. So there's something here that these two are sharing. And there's something here that these two are sharing. But just because we change git here doesn't necessarily mean that the server understands everything. So this push on Heroku triggers something inside of git. It's like a, hey, after something happens like this, do this. That's what it, it's all it is. It's like, after commit. After commit, like, um, restart. Start the server, or like after commit update something, or whatever. Like, like I'm not at Heroku and I'm not in their code. I'd like to be uh, reading it, but I think it's something like this. That's that's the behavior that I see. So that means that this connection actually happens. File system's updated on top of this file system here. Git actually updates the file system here. File system. This is where all the folders are. And then the server is told to restart. And now the server has this index.html available as like to be a source of information. I have this URL, and by default, index.html gets loaded as part of the Rails configuration part of how like public in the web server configuration is mentioned as the place where all the files are stored. So 
the interesting thing starts to happen with Rails when we delete this index.html. And that's like the next step that we'll go through. So what we have here is like an understanding that Git and the server are independent but connected through the file system and that we can connect our machine, localhost, us, to a remote system, Heroku, that's basically running a very similar, um, semantically similar setup. So it has a server, it has a Git repository, and maybe it has a file system, like it has to, but it may look very different here, it may be very different here, but the behavior is exactly the same. And that's just another abstraction layer that we have. So that's, that's it. And then I also wanted to say something about Bash, a little random fact. And apparently it was put together by, you know? Born, the Born, original? Yeah, I think. Born Again Shell? Yeah. So there's actually two people that did it. There's a man and a woman. So I want to find that out. So I'll find that out for next time. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs>